My brothers and sisters, the Lord is with you. And also with you. We continue listening to God speak to us from the gospel in the tradition of Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Lord. <clears throat> Jacob was the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Of her was born Jesus, who was called the Christ. Now this is how the birth of Jesus came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention, when behold, the angel of the Lord appeared in a dream and said to him, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your house. For it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and he took Mary into his home. This is the gospel, the good news of our salvation. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. And the words of the gospel may our sin be blotted out. Amen. Amen. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, and welcome to all of our brothers and sisters who have come out to witness uh, Brother John's final vows. It's Thank like you. going to the guillotine, I guess. But <laughs> <laughs> it really wasn't that bad. <laughs> Today, St. Joseph's Day, March 19th, has always been a special day. Um, today, we celebrate the feast day of our pastor, Father Joseph. Forty-eight years ago today, I took my first vows as an Alexian brother. Wow. And last September, well, it would be 51 years in September night, September 15th, the Feast of the Exaltation of the Holy Cross and the Sorrowful Mother, that I entered religion. And it seems like yesterday, but then again, it seems like a lifetime. <laughs> anyway, just putting things in perspective. So I've been around the block, I've been to this rodeo at least 50, 60 times, I <laughs> But today we celebrate the Feast of St. Joseph, and I always believe that Joseph got the short end of the stick. The short end of the stick. Because when we read the Gospel stories, very few of those stories have Joseph mentioned. Even in Matthew's Gospel, when he has the Magi, the wise men going, it's Mary and the child in the house. Where's Joseph? I guess he's out looking for a job. <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> and yet, according to the Jewish law, the house of David passes through the father. And so Joseph was of the house of David, and to fulfill the prophecy that it would be of David's lineage that the Messiah would come, Joseph played a most important role because Mary was not of the house of David. Judaism passed through the mother, but the house, the lineage, passed through the father. And so... Joseph played a very, very important role if, if the prophecies were to be fulfilled, that the Messiah would be in the house of David. And yet, this individual, this, this, this common individual who was a carpenter, they say, but the, in, in the Greek the word was used, it was not a carpenter, but more like a day laborer, a handyman, one who kind of did things around. And Nazareth was probably as big as this 
church that we're sitting in today, uh, maybe 30, 40, maybe 50 families tops. And so it wasn't a great city that Jesus grew up in. It was a very, very small village and out of the water, a backwater, they would call it. And so Joseph probably found himself going to Capernaum to get work of the day. And that was the largest city a couple of miles to the east of Nazareth on the Lake of Galilee. But we read Joseph as a faithful man. And think about Luke's story. The story that we hear at Christmas time. Here we have a young couple. Mary, just coming of age where she would be uh, betrothed to a, a husband maybe 14, 15 years old. We have Joseph, we don't know his age, but he probably was maybe a couple of years older, which was not unheard of. Some speculate that Joseph may have been married before and had children from his first wife, and his wife had passed away. And so Mary would have been the second wife. Because we read in the scriptures about Jesus' brothers and sisters. And they may have been stepbrothers and sisters. But in those days, if you were of the house, you were a brother or a sister, as if you were blood. But be that as it may. So we have this young man, and he finds that this woman that he has fallen in love with, has asked for her hand in marriage, is now with child. And there in lies the rub or the horns of the dilemma. Because now Joseph is faced with, what do I do? I could publicly proclaim her loose and have her stoned to death according to the law because she committed adultery. Because if in the Jewish law, if you were espoused to another, you were like married, although the marriage contract had not been uh, signed, if you will. And in many cases, once you were espoused, you could come and live with your, your attendant. And that would be okay. And so she may have been guilty of adultery. Or he could put her away privately and just, you know, walk away from the situation. But the fact is that Mary is an unwed mother. Here she is in this small town, pregnant, without a husband. And Joseph is that individual who's supposed to be taking her into his house. So you can well imagine what the neighbors must be thinking. And yet, in a dream, as we hear today, in a dream, the angel says to Joseph, Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for it is by the Holy Spirit that she has conceived, and she will bear a son. And you shall name him Jesus, because he shall be the Savior. He shall be the Savior of his people. Now, I don't know about you, but when I have a dream, I don't get up and... I mean, it's a dream. It could be because of the fact that you... What cheap liquor or uh, something that was undercooked or whatever. But, you know, sometimes dreams don't necessarily move us to do something as drastic as taking this woman, this unwedded mother, into your home. But Joseph believes. Joseph has faith. And so Joseph takes Mary into his home. And that's why he's called the righteous one. The just man. And if the tradition be true, Mary gives birth to the son, and then again he has a dream, and they moved into Egypt. Because of this dream, Joseph, take the mother and the child, and go into Egypt until I tell you, for Herod seeks the life of the child. And so they, they go. And so we have this man who takes a primitive, primitive, primitive. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Whoa, well, and in this uh, act of salvation, in this act of salvation of the incarnation of the Word made flesh, Jesus, and yet we hear so little about him. And yet, 
Joseph is called the patron of the universal church. He is the patron of a happy death. He is a patron of many, many families and countries. I know among the Italians, he is a very, very big one. And usually on St. Joseph's Day, there is the St. Joseph's Table, which is laden with food and pastries and a variety of other things, which was the tradition. Joseph had a plan in, in his life, and that plan not only fell apart, it exploded in his face. And because of his faithfulness, because of what he believed, Joseph played a very important role in our salvation. Today, we have chosen, we, the community, have chosen to have Brother John take his final vows. Now, Brother John has been with us for a good number of years in the good times and in the bad times that he's stuck it out. He has realized that we are, Jesus slipped from the cracker more than once, but yet he still comes back and says, yes, I want to. Now, I'm sure a number of years ago, John had other things in mind. He had been married, he had a daughter, he had grandchildren, and for whatever reason, God said, wait a minute, there's something yet more to do. I would dare say, 25 years ago, this would be the last place that Brother John would think of him being ready to take life vows as a Franciscan brother in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And if we could look at the time and push it forward and say, John, it's going to happen, he would say, oh, yeah, okay. And yet, God works his miracles in our lives. That's why I say to you people tonight, never say never. Because when you do, God says, oh yeah, <laughs> let me show you. Tonight we celebrate with Brother John because this is something that he has wanted for a long time. And we have always hoped that this would be the day that he would come to us and say yes. Not just for a period of time, but for life. And it's been a long time since we had someone profess in our community for life. And so we as a community, as small as we are, rejoice that Brother John has said yes. Not to us, not to us necessarily, but to God. To the spirit that John allowed to work in his life and I think that's the message for today. Joseph allowed the Spirit to motivate him to do what he had to do so that the Son of God would be able to live and move and have his being among us. He protected the child. He protected his mother. He gave and served and did what he had to do as a faithful and loving husband. <coughs> John, in his own way, has allowed the Spirit of God to speak through him in his ministry at the hospital, in his ministry here at the church, and of his <coughs> witness to those people around him who know who and what he is. And so tonight we celebrate. We take this little hiatus in our Lenten as we open up Holy Week, and instead of moaning and groaning and crying about our sins, tonight we rejoice and we celebrate and we welcome Brother John into our Franciscan family. Again, not just for a period of time, but for the rest of his life. Please God, that would be glory and happy. Congratulations, John. Thank you.